يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم شراط الذين أنعمت عليهم خير المحدود عليهم ولا الدالين الله الذي جعل لكم الأرض قرارا والسماء بناء وصوركم فأسنوا صوركم ورزقكم من دهيبات ذلك الله ربكم فتبارك الله رب العالمين هو الخير لا إله إلا هو فروح مولسين الله الدين قلد لله رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وإنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المسلين قلد لله رب العالمين آمين آمين شكرا إمام جالا بشاب يهب الفلو بليس تانك يا شامن Gracious and eternal Father, we thank you for the past month of April, for seeing us through from the beginning of it, the very end of it. And we thank you for ushering us to the beginning of another new month, the month of May. We continue to give our sittings here in the TRFC under your direction, your protection, and we continue to pray for the witness that will appear before the commission this morning, that you will grant the witness the boldness to speak the truth. Grant the commission the discerning spirit to discern between truth and falsehood. And we continue to pray for the population, the diaspora, and the international community as well. The Lord, we know the interest they have in the TRRC that they should allow the due process to take its proper course. And at the end of it, you will reward each and every one accordingly. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Emma. Bishop Odeko. Council, I believe we are continuing with our focus on the justice sector institutions. If that is the case and you're ready with this morning's witness, uh, please proceed. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I should say good afternoon, Mr. Yes, Chairman, yes, Commissioners, yes. Yeah. and members of the audience. Uh, uh, yes, we we still continuing with our investigations into the justice sector institutions, and uh, I'm pleased to announce that uh, Mrs. Hadi Dandejabi would lead the next witness. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fall, Lead Council. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and Commissioners and the audience. May the witness be brought in, please, Mr. Osher. I, Patrick Gomez. I, Patrick Gomez. Do swear that. Do swear that. I'll speak the truth. I will speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Witness. Good afternoon. Welcome to the TRRC. Thank you very much. As usual, we like to have interpretation during the hearing. Can you tell this commission, would you prefer Wolof or Mandinka? I am not comfortable speaking English language. You will speak in the English language, but we normally do interpretation for the interpretation? audience. Wolof, maybe. Thank you very much. Interpretation boot, may we have Wolof, please? Mr. Witness, just to bear in mind that since we're going to be having interpretation, you will have to give a few minutes between my questions and your answers so that we don't talk over the interpreters. Thank very, you. Very well. Thank you so much. Interpretation boot, are we ready? Mm -hmm. 
Welcome again to the TRRC, Mr. Witness. Thank you so much. And thank you very much for your willingness to come and testify before this commission today. Sede binyung la dalalat se di gir kontanjio linga nangu purnyo teofite. During your testimony, we shall go through the following issues today. You shall tell the commission about your background, including your educational background. You shall tell the commission about your appointment into the judicial service. You you shall tell the Commission about the atmosphere under which magistrates worked under the Jame regime. You shall tell the Commission about the relationship that existed between the bench, meaning the magistrates, and the executive. And the executive, we mean the government of Yaya Jame. We would like to hear about the reactions of the executive under the direction of Yahyajame on decisions and judgments which emanated from the courts in particular the magistrate's court in which the said government under Yahyajame had interest in you shall tell this commission about the reason why you were transferred from a normal station magistrate to a roaming magistrate. You shall also discuss before this commission the encounter you had with the NIA meaning the National Intelligence Agency. National Intelligence Agency. After discussing those issues, Mr. Witness, I shall transfer you back to the chair and the commissioners for any questions they may have for you. After that, you should be given the opportunity to give any questions closing remarks you may have. In case you need to have any break during the sitting, you should draw my attention to same. And you shall be accorded the same. If you are comfortable and ready, we may proceed with the hearing. Yes, we may. Well, you can sit comfortably, Mr. Well. Witness. I am. Good. Can you state your names for this commission? My names are Patrick Gomez. My name is Patrick Gomez. Are you known by any other names? I am only known by Patrick Gomez. Uh, Patrick Gomez, regular Mahame. Can you tell the commission your date of birth? I was born on the 27th day of February 1985. Can you tell the commission where you were born? I was born in the village of Ndemban in Fonyi. Can you tell the commission where you were born? I was born in the village of Ndemban in Fonyi. Can you tell the commission where you Can you give this commission your educational background? Can you tell the commission where you were born? Yes, I attended St. Teresa's Primary School from the year 1992 to 1997. Uh, atum 1992 to 1997, Mangi Jange St. Uh, Teresa's Primary School. And then St. Teresa's Junior, Junior School from 1997 to 2000, from 2001. Uh, 1997 to 2001, Mangi Ne St. Teresa's Junior Secondary School. And then I went to St. Augustine's High School. Uh, Madame St. Augustine High School. From 2001 to 2004. Because I get 2001 by 2004. Is it correct to say that you did your A levels at St. Augustine's High School? Um, yes, it, it was the equivalent, yes. Well, no, not all. You may continue to tell us where you got your diploma in law. Upon completion of my high school education, I went to the Gambia Technical Training Institution, GTI. I was the first where I did my A-level and diploma in law. I was the first in law. 
between 2004 to 2006. 2004 to 2006. I then got enrolled at the University of the Gambia. University Gambia. In the year 2009. Atum 2009. At the um, Faculty of Law. Uh, and I um, got my LLB degree in 2013. Uh, my LLB degree in 2013. And in the same year, I also attended um, FSU, Florida State University. Yeah, my Django. Where I um, did a one year program in human rights and humanitarian law. Yeah, my Django. I did my bar training in the Gambia. Yeah, my in Gambia. In 2014. In 2014. Yes, and I also did some other short courses um, whilst um, working for the Ministry of Justice. Basically, that, that's my legal education. Mr. Gomez, just for clarification, Mr. Gomez, did you attend the law school before proceeding to the course which you did in Florida State University? And that young on the German Gachi Jango, Binu Jang in Villa, Balanga continued them for the State University. I did um, that program just immediately after I finished my um, my LLB. I did my program for the Nabu Maja Halis, my LLB, because there was a gap between um, the LLB and the and the BL. And the Amona Gap, the Digante Boham, the Nekan, the Digante LLB, and BLB. Thank you for that clarification. Can you tell the Commission? what you did after you finished university and also your LLB, sorry, your BL course. I am a commission I am a university university BL. Immediately I finished my BL. Which is the barista um, program. I had an appoint appointment to work for the judiciary of the Gambia. Mr. Gomez, can you tell this commission whether you had to do an application to join the judicial service? I commission Yes, at the time we, I, I sent my application to the, to the CJ's office, which is Chief Justice's office at the um, at the High Court complex in Banjul. Uh, Chief Justice in Banjul. And I was called for an interview. And I was appointed as a first class magistrate. It is therefore correct to say that you're telling this commission that you were hired based on your qualifications. That is correct. Well, that you were found to be a fit, fit and proper person to actually hold the position of a magistrate. Yes, because in fact, um, when I finished my bar, it was not um, my first choice to apply for um, the, the position of a magistrate. In fact, I was recommended by, by an unknown person and we were just called myself and one Babka Drame. Uh, uh, and then um, we were called um, by um, at the CG's office and then we were made to understand that um, someone recommended us to apply um, at the lower bench as a first class magistrate. And Yes. Mr. Gomez, can you tell this commission presently what position you hold? Mr. Gomez, I currently work as a senior state counsel at the Attorney General's office. Uh, senior state counsel, the lawyer in Gurgi, the office Attorney General's chambers. Thank you. So I'd like to take you back to where you said that you were hired as a first class magistrate. first class magistrate. Can you tell this commission about your experience when you were appointed a magistrate? I was appointed in 2014. And I was posted um, to Carnivan Court, Court, which was one of the biggest jurisdictions at the time. And still. And I 
did my induc induction with the principal magistrate at the time. Ma def nak suma njang ci wali atté bobu ak principal magistrate bi ci waxtu wo. Mr. Gomez, can you tell this commission what the induction entailed? Dig ñu mëna wax nak nek bobu nga nekkon ci ron atté card bu mag bobu lan la umba? So when you are appointed as a magistrate, bu nga tané fa la def la magistrate, I'm regardless of your um education, mo xam nak sa njang fu mu tollu itamen dey. You are required to go um under a training um before as an experienced magistrate fok si nga am jang mo xamni ni dang ko dang la ko sétale ci kenn bala nga nek nak magistrate bu mot so you, usually this training will, will will entail um you will sit with the with, with the principal magistrate um while he is present over cases in the courtroom ya bu wana da nga tok dende ko xamni ni ku mat la ci walli atté ay ray sét naka la moy doxalé ci mbiri atté yi so that you have first hand as to how cases are being dealt with um in court bu ko defé nak da nga xam yow ni nga xamé ni noon lañuy doxalé ci wali court yes basically that's it wa lool dal la ci gatal can you tell this commission how long you normally have to sit with the principal magistrate da nga mëna wax commission bi nak ci yeen dir nga dé faral di tok ak atékat bu mag bobu am usually it will last um between 2 weeks to 1 month wa lego lek ci dir ak ñaari bëss yu ay bé ben wër therefore it is correct to say that after that said induction you now move to your own court don mune ñoo wax ne njanga bi nga jange ci ron magistrate bu mag bobu gannaaw bi ci nga toxu nak ci sa atté kay bopa that's correct wow now tell this commission your experience in handling your own court in the hanifik magistrate court hal commission bi nak yow naka nga doon liggey ci kanifik magistrate court bi so um in kanifik magistrate court we were about five magistrates at the time ci kanifik magistrate court jamono bobu ñun juroom lañ won ci atté kadi but we were all independent from each other way na kenn ku nek ak dafa dox ak sawo ci bopam and so when cases come in the morning bu ko tebar yi ñu ci suba ci cases am ida criminal cases or civil cases mo xam nak muy tefar bu wala bo xamne digante nit ak nit la the principal magistrate at the time who would have been the most experienced on the bench at the time ki nga xamne nak moy khalifa gi nga xamne moy jité won ci wali atté bi ci juuma mo do nga xam mo ñu gëna macc ci liggéey bi is tax with the responsibility of assigning files to magistrates mom nak mom lañu sass nak lu aju ci wali ni muy jëlé file diko jox nak kenn di di sass ci ñun magistrate yi and these files are assigned based on the the class of magistrate that that um are available at the time bu koy fe nak la yoy yoy ñu ngi koy jox nak ci sele ko nak ci mi nga xamé noon la magistrate yi maccanté ci liggéey bi it's important to state that you have about uh, three classes of magistrates da na le ba nak pour ñu léral né amna ñetti fan magistrate mais ce que mais vous get to that in a minute mais ce que mais dinañ égg fofu ci karam touti was you were stationed at kanifing magistrate who yep. was the principal magistrate at that time jamono bi nga nek kanifing magistrate ci atté kay bo kan moy won atté kat bu mag ba fa nekkon the principal was um one mr your worship tata bali as he then was ak bo jamono bu nak tabali mo fa nekkon your worship he is currently the, the master of the high court the jamono bi na moy master of the high court is he currently master or sheriff of the high court master la wala sheriff ci atté kay bu mag be if i can vividly remember um he was sheriff at some point but i think now he should be the master of the high court i think ci mo muné faté jamono bu sheriff bi la won way nak légui dal ya war na nek nek ni master bi la ci high court You started telling us about the classes of magistrates that existed in the system. Commencé won nga nak dañu wax yan façon ngi magistrate ñoo nek ci liggéey kay ba. And it is still the system that exists. So na lolu moy dox ba legui de. Correct. Can you go further and explain to the commission about the different classes of magistrates? Di nga mëna gëna waxal nak commission bi yan façon ak yan façon ngi magistrate ñoo nek ci atté kay ba. Yes, you have um the first class magistrate am am nga first class magistrate bi you have a second class magistrate ya am ñaareli class magistrate and you have the third class magistrate am nga am ñetteli class magistrate am the difference is that um based on the jurisdiction that they have over cases li len outel rek mu ngi aju nak ci walli seen dayu way ci mbiri la yo yoyu just to say that um there are cases that can only be handled by a first class magistrate based on the education and the qualification mo nek rek na amna yenn la yo yo xamne ni ben pa magistrate bi boko wara amé mu ngi aju nak ci wali xam xamam ak seen fim tollu ci dayo ja atté and the same applies to the second class and the third class bu ko defé nak lool rek mo yé jëm ci ñaareli class bi ak ba ci ñetteli class bi 
Is it also correct that we have magistrates that are called lay magistrates? Yes, these are usually, in fact, the third class magistrates. They wouldn't require any formal um, legal training. Prior to the appointment as a magistrate. But then, because of their um, because of their experience in either government or or any reputable institution. They are deemed to be qualified to, to um, administer over minor, minor cases. Yes. Thank you for that explanation. I thought it was important to actually explain further what you meant by third class magistrates. You've told the commission that you were the you were a first class magistrate at Canifing. Can you tell the commission what type of cases you handled? Um as a first class magistrate uh, first class magistrate the class I handle both criminal and civil cases. And my powers regarding handling civil cases would be limited to cases that are not above $1 million. And when it comes to a criminal matter, during my time, we can handle all cases, except um, cases that attracts, um, that, 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 let's say, maybe treason cases or that attracts a death penalty, sort of. At the time that you were a magistrate at Canifing, can you tell this commission who was the Chief Justice of the Judiciary? Yes, when I was employed, the, C, the Chief Justice was one um, Justice Chohan, a Pakistani. Right? I think the full name is Ali Nawaz Chohan. Ali Nawaz Chohan. Yes. And by the time you left the judiciary, was he still the chief justice? No, because um, in fact, um, in the middle of my um, my employment, he had already left because I understand um, he was he was sacked. By Mr. Gomez, can you explain further to this commission what do you mean by he was sacked? The CG at the time I understand um, had issues regarding um, some judicial decisions that were taken. And it was common knowledge that um, the president at the time, yeah, Jame asked um, him to leave the country within I think 48 hours or so. So. Mr. Gomez, is it correct to say that you're telling this commission that this said Chief Justice, Chief Justice Bobo, gave a decision or decisions or gave decisions which the president then, Yaya Jame, was not happy with? Yes, the facts we got at the time was that um, the as executive in the name of the president was happy with him. And because of that, he was given notice to leave the jurisdiction. That's correct. Can you tell the commission who replaced him? Um, he was replaced by Emmanuel Fagbele. Uh, he's a Nigerian by national. Uh, 
Thank you for that. So now we go back to where you were a principal magistrate. Principal magistrate. I meant first class magistrate. First class magistrate. Tell us the experience you had in the year of 2015. In the year 2015, I recall vividly. Um, I was coming on my normal duties as a magistrate. I'm going to call and admit my case. I'm going to call and admit my case. I'm going to court and administer over cases. I'm going to court the court. And then there was one day um, which, was, which was, was my first experience regarding um, having problems um, was, um, in, my, in, my, in, in the course of my work. Mr. Gomez, do you remember the day and the exact month this incident happened? The month, yes, is, it, it was on the, the month of March. March at 2015, but not the exact day. You may continue to tell the commission what happened on that day. So I was in court and then I was hearing cases and then um, the the court was called in to the court um, and then I saw the principal at the time. The principal the principal at the time. 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 The principal at the would it be correct to say that your court sitting was then interrupted? Yes, it was, but, but apparently it was a normal practice at the time. At this time, how long had you been a magistrate? Just a couple of months. Um, I think I should have been on the bench for about four months or so, five months. Please continue to tell the commission what happened after he walked into your courtroom. Yes, so he came in and then said he wanted to talk to me. He had a file in his hand. And he informed me that um, the, that matter had to be transferred to the High Court. And I, I said to him, well, that's fine, because he said he was busy, so he, he could not do it. He had other matters to attend to. And so asked that, um, let me just transfer the, the matter to the High Court. At this point, were you given any opportunity to read over the file or even understand the facts? There was no time um, at all to open the file and then go, go over the file. Because, um, I, like I said, I was in court and the case were ongoing. Continue to tell the commission. What happened when he gave you the file? So when um, he gave me the file, I agreed to, to um, take the file to the When he gave me the file, I agreed to transfer the matter to the High Court. Because it was usual practice that uh, the matter was transferred to the High Court. When you have a case that the court doesn't have jurisdiction over, uh, you either the file is either transferred to the high court depending on the nature of the case. Yeah. Mr. Gomez, you just said something interesting. You said that was the usual procedure. Can you explain better to this commission what you meant? Like, like I explained earlier on, um, we have um, jurisdiction over cases. And there's a limit to, um, to the, the power we have to administer over certain cases. 
Yeah. So, for example, if you have a file that um, that can only be dealt by a high court judge, yeah. for example, if it's a murder case, yeah. so for example, if it's a murder case, we are required to transfer the file. Then you are to hold the file, boo. And there are some instances where um, you can also strike out the matter. It depends on the, the nature of the file. Mr. Gomez, can you explain for the Commission why was it necessary for such files to be brought to the Magistrate Court first and not directly to the High Court? Nothing you know, I'll not learn more to file book new conjecture in the Chief Magistrate Court. Be well, I know you're going to attack. I remember. Well, um, prosecutors will argue that they go like at a new company, you know, I'm a Katie at a new 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 that did that Gante that because of the 72 hours timeline given by the Constitution and the native and you know, I'm in a moment you had a new I report you I be to you me. For people or suspects, de suspects detained um, in, in suspicion of the commission of an offence, that, that they should either be released conditionally or unconditionally. They will, they will want to argue that it is much better to arrange them first before a magistrate. Who will perhaps either grant bail or, or deny bail and then transfer the matter to the High Court? But but um, the overwhelming opinion is that the overwhelming opinion is that you only bring forward a case before a, a competent court. Why not focusing in the attitude uh, called the Kalam court book of the court bureau that you can only um, that if you file a matter before a court, it has to be the competent court. A buffet can a young agile a black fox in a minute court book of the court bureau. And so, Mr. You Gomez, yes, sorry to interrupt you. You actually meant a court of competent jurisdiction, yes. No, we're not taking my attic. I will have no new and dollar put your attic of Ufuno. You may continue. That's correct. Well, you may continue. Yes, I, I understand that I, there are people who are listening who, who may not understand um, some of these legal, legal terms. But, but then apparently that was what happened. Yeah. So, but then um, when I agreed to transfer the matter. Sorry, Mr. Gomez, before we get to that part of transferring the case. You've just explained an interesting scenario to the Commission. Which seems to suggest that there used to be a lot of holding charges that were placed. And it could be seen to be an abuse of the process. Can you explain the holding charges that were being abused? by the police and the system to this commission. Yes, in fact, um, at the time, there were lots of holding charges. Mr. Gomez, sorry, if I may also just add, and this was also happening to cases where the government, Yai Jami, had an interest in. That's correct, and it also became um, a, a, a general practice as well. Because it, um, um, eventually the, the, the police were accustomed to doing that. And would it also be correct to say that accused persons were actually brought to court without representation at times where they could not get representation? Yes, in fact, I, I experienced that more in my, in my um, capacity as a defense counsel. Uh,
alaikum min benno makan jiata sin tembenna e to min nan botale trc yin tembenna talan kling tambita miniti tanni lulu sinanna tilebula kibaro sindalma nal badima alaji modu juf kibar folo folo nyinto e talebolo mo muang anin sey min bota karamol to min yalon ko wolle ka alquran tanko ke banjunning adala satiola e kunun ko sibito la wolle bentanun e hotelo doto kololi jeto e nyo seake alquran karona tankola e ben nemi yalon ko min ya depas wolle mo company te ka min ko ja oil e pour ñin kamal don ka alquran ñin karona la tanko ñin ko ñañi ka kinimandi di banko ñin ka ñan alin sen la moy non kadi jatu jallo la e kibaro la ñin bunda ñin to sawo wala mo markaz al fatih bukhari dar al arqam dar al sunna anin masat al bir anin ma murbai anin markaz al rushaidan anin markaz al sheikh al albani anin madrasa al ghari hira min al karam multi min yalan ko wala ma beta jang ala mal al nas man dabe wala sheikh na jeju hafizahullah ana tale burka tenturo ke talibulla ila lodi loda nyima anila karanya nyima ay susun di baake anila alfalu ay wal fanan susun di baake fulan nyango bi je min bi je wala min di ko nyin jaafulolu ay tentu fanan ay jeyi ila lo nya nyima min yalon ko ye wala lo pour ka dino nyim fasa pour ka lo dula le nyim bambandi anata din kraf do fana yitandi min be den din 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 wala bayri ako nyo saba mo min keta jang a sifa sa balemo abe wosabol kono dindingolu bi be sewala baake nyin kamala ko inene manta hotelo to bi ina da hotelo to ila kachali be ni fintata yan wala be kala nyindi ko bita hotelo to anu awun tata hotelo to barinde be fendo kafula ji wala nyindi ko ila posol fanam fendim be kala jele so waya yita ko ni bota jang cheikh jeju be seworo fanam sotalale min mo posol fanam be dufla le inshallah daud fanam ay wala mo na alfa folo min diamata afanan na kuma kan wal mutentur kuma kan wal lati min aye yitandi jama mumi bela momo bi jam anata tenturo fanan kere kere ja wal ye bake 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 ila loda nyima min ya lon ko ibe lori ngala ako ja wal te lafla wala ke tolu fo anim fanan ke la lod la yitandi aw khairan wa faqahun wal fanan bi ngaji ki ko ila loda amanta la filiri momo be nyem banko kan tabirin ka don fo koyna bara fo pasamas ila lo dela mantara filere moma alama ale dema alama ale bede ma molu min yalon ko wolam non banke o te min botale o alquran karaw nyo sey nyinto ki barol ya yitandi ko min siata dalasi wuli keme nyonti wolle talata talibol tema min yalon ko wolle kanyo soto ni o bata je ki barol nyinto fanan nyin be sunkaro min kono de marol min ka futa molma e ka fodo mi yalon ko be bon sungo be angal terle ka foy ko people empowerment life project wala mo ka molu sembenti ay la balwo nyinto e wol fanan mam me bake ye domoro do janjang molu tema min yalon ko wolle mo e de ma min yalon ko e bulo me ko be e wolle mo e mani botolte sukuro anin diwli non ya keno lati kunda pikadelele en sen la moynum kadi juwar kadi jatu juwara la nyin e kachala e min bonde nyaw dun kirato ma alay na sungo mo da kila xor mo kamala oke nan ka fo nyende meda kan sa ngay sanje dandan si sango sanne sungaro sira ka ko nyen tobodo ni moluka e doko ke Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin fa wa narafu dan tambadun bi nga fangalu sura fangame yalon ko fisada e kasungaro fisane do mandi oke mano be je le tulo be je anen so sukuro be je kada tamare o so musunde wala ku do de me yalon ka kan na fa baka na yo ya baraka baka men yalon ko ye de naro ke biri safo angalter fo jang ya baraka baka be dwala mo be be dwala mo be men fanan ala lanjuro le kan ala ma ala e ke sabarlaati kila ko mo kamala dol fanan me yalo ngon kata laro ka ala kanan ko rendi nyin na ala ma ala e ma koy ngala taraaro ke nim misul mol kala de ngala kila fanan ko mo do ala baraka baka yo 
dole kuma moy wotalar dula ñin toje bitu hane bi e ka fodo min yalon ko fananka de maroke lillahi alay e ka foy ko khidmatul karim tuba ila bulomin be banko kan wol fanam be tenten kan sunkaro kono don ka e iftaro wala mo suntera ngo di molla e kata lopitanol to nim banko kan tare ñin e ka foy ñin khidmatul karim tuba gambia e faye ka fole min yalon ko itata nun ka suntera ngo di molla minu be laare edward francis multi ching hospital wala lopitan baati min be banjun anin sere ko dal lopitano ñinto a dalilo mu ñinet don ka molu e dema be ñin e horom karomin kono mi yalon ko horomo warta baake mi mu sam ramadan te wala sun karo ñinte ani bi na studio ko no jam bitu malum fo ngam mosoto leni min se kacha atewo be ngo ñin ka fo ñin na kola ngamira mang ñanta mole kacha ndila non bari ma soto no e julo ñin to woto ako keta wole ñama e ani bi silang sitale din kira dolto min yalon ko duniya ko no taring duniya ko no taring ka dati ni fata findu bankolla jeto koto borla lonna la karola e be jibero ke kam boro do la miyan ko wole se ke boriti min se mol tankande nyin susula courant la malaria e ka to be silarine ko tonya ase wajabi no le fata findu bankol to e kata kol keta nyawnya ka susula courant wala kadie courant nyin kele bare scientin e lonnal kam min yitande e afrika kono fata findu bankol nyin to jang ni manta man ben courant nyin be wajabi la kote ke katu e fata findu banko dolto nyin tembe na ay mol batandi ay korindi bakele sako e dinngolo bitum e fata nyam ndoro wal nyin ti ko e susulalo katara du lalle to min yalon ko nol bije ani nyin ji no ngolo e woto danda ngol senia wol kumata bakele adun nimman wule akuna tola drong e ase mol mantoro no baba bakele adun ay jaw dinngol la bake ani musol min yalon ko e be har jeri ani kebal fanan bari bitum e tumado anim fanan ka sankel city anin nyin sankel min yalon ko e ka bori jiol soto wol be mo ferolleti ka susula courant nyim bay e fata finduja bari kata kol ketan wo fannol nyin to le bari hani bi e lonnalu jaaroro karola ya jele ko abe finti kanna ne domande adum borol soto da min boko bori kesol quantum anen o sifalo e bari bitum nyin doldum e bitum abe je kan daming e mo findu bankolem bitum se dua ke don alasa ko barako doya ane be nim botaje e fata findu jang south africa jeto fanan e be lorin ka je ko nim busol wala plastic nylon lo e ise yela mandino e ke ke kuti mi yalon ko ate alhawa wala dandangol nim e nondila bitum sign south africa ferol lota min yalon ko wala batina la e nyin no fengol nyin ka fay bal kono anim be dol kono teng be fata fata de ndulal nyin to e ise be fitano ke ko e ka ferol ke la ke yelamande e kudo timin yalon ko mol se nafal soto je adon kis kisirol be keri na nyin tembe ka je ko e ni ke mo kono mo se dula tani woro be e south africa je la nyim busol wala nailon e ke sen kan de dale e pour mol se muna fangana minna dina e ka fay ka ke no fewanti wala kon ka fa nyamin jam balito e bito nyimmo kuleti mi yalon ko televisiono dol min woko CGTN e tata no Johannesburg mbe South Africa ka jibe e nyim balito wala te nyim plastic ma fewol mi nyim busol nylonolti e se mone ke no wala ke yelamande ni e tinya wala ni e fay e sa murindi no ka de da masu wala fo ase fendol wulu min yalon ko ase ibun adama e nafa dina abe kala no fengoluti min yalon ko abe dinkiralu nondila hani bi ate south africa banko nyinto e nyin e subolu min yalon ko e ka sotoje e ya jele ko nyin tembenna e busel minu be south africa e be to nyato nyai la safaro be tama kam bakele e nyin e subola karola adu ya jiki fanko senelal wala mu ben tiol ti min yalon ko wala ka bengolu malayande e be jikirin ko e be ko di jama ba soto la e yela nyim marseo to mi yalon ko nyin temben na yela nin solla mengo kamala ani e ka topato nyamin e wo be ma fo sendila jele bake fa fo e ferol fo be keri na min yalon ko ala la na tambo fo sa tina la e subolu ki bantala bangol to ka wa fi jadu wobe be kala bentiol minu senelalti minu be o banko kan ila nafalati anim gusewlo
ጌታችን ባድን ወሉ እኚህ ነው ለምን ኪባሮ ማሩፍ ወልዲንግ ሚኒስተራ ለኝን ተምበ ነ ጂአርኤስ አጀራቶ ማማጄ ላ ያ ማሮካን ኪባሮ ለካሮ ለኬቸን ሱኞካ አልቤቴን ቱ ካል ጃይ አለተረኩኝ ማካንጄ ካይሮ ሚንበ ባንኮ ካን አለማ ሰባተና አልባዲ ማላጂ ሞዱ ጁፍ ለካ ሲንዳል ማኑ ወሰላም from the principal at the time wa ndax ndiga ndigal bi nga xamne mom la joge ko ci jele ci principal magistrate jamono bo was just between um, myself and him at the time and so there was no other third party mom nak jamono bo man ak mom rek la amu kenen ku ñu ñettel and so therefore i could not just um, tell um, the parties that well I was informed that this case should be transferred so it has to be transferred te bo munu ma wax ñoo ñu ne len ah mbir mi dañ ma wax ne na ko toxal te kon dañ ko wara toxal that would have looked very unprofessional at the time at this point just to make it clear for the commission does it mean that you had jurisdiction to proceed with this matter jamono ji na pour leral commission bi rek ndax melne na ne yow amon nga dole pour def atté bobu layo bi fofu sa place bi yes i had um i had the jurisdiction to to proceed over the matter waaw bobu amon na dole pour ji at le jiti na atté bobu In fact that was the main reason why I I I I I just had to proceed with the matter. Ah lool nak mo taxone sax mo warona continuer ak mbir mom because um we also as well transfer matters on on um, on two grounds perhaps. Ah ndax ñu ngi ci ñaari dalli rek moy tax ñuy wara toxal leyo because the, the practice at the time will dictate ah ndax jamono bo li nga xamne lool moy atté dana leral ne that is either you don't have jurisdiction ben yow amulo dole pour atté in which event you will transfer the matter or strike out the matter ci fo xamne ni ben nga toxal ko wala nga genné ko sa court or that it is just convenient that the matter be be, be tried at the high court wala ay tebe nga xamne ni dal na xel rek ne dal mbir mom nañ ko atté ci high court bi yes so in this case we had um, subject matter jurisdiction eh ci jawono bo nak ci len amna ko atté lu tédé lu atté bobu non in fact we have subject matter territorial and personal jurisdiction eh ci lool nak moy ñaari fanna yi nga xamne non lañ tuddu non and so they indicate to us that they intended to proceed with the matter ci len ñu won nak ni ñom dañ bëggona continuer ak atté bobu and so the, the matter was just um was just called for for it to be um to be had ci len wax nak mbir ñu oté né né dal dañ ko wara atté continue tell this commission how you proceeded with the matter égalé lu wax commission bi nak naka nga mujjé nak ak layo bobu yes so um when when the case was called jamono bi nga xamé né dal dinañ oté nak pour ñu atté layo bobu the accused was um was called to take his plea the yeah, accused bi nak king tumal ci lañ ko ona mu mu wax ndax nanguna liñ ko tuma wala nangu liñ ko tumal and i recall um he pleaded guilty um to two of the counts ci la fatale ko ne dal ñaari bunte yi nga xamné ni mom lañ ko tumal yeb nanguna ko but they were um they, they were mainly um, um offenses in relation to the motor traffic offense way nak yim nangu moy li nga xamne ni moy tuma yi ko tek ci walli dawala auto bi these were minor offenses nek na nak ay tuma yo xamne tuma yi ndaw lañ and so when that was done gannaaw bu mu defé lolu and um i i decided to to adjourn the matter ci la xala nak nen dama toxal nak layo bobu so as to decide um what would be the the most appropriate sentence ci la xala nak lan nga xamne lu la ko wara atté that was because of the fact that lool moy ndek mbir mi moy at the time we were not um very much familiar with the with those minor offenses um which were, which were the motor traffic offenses ndax jamono bobu nak ñun ak suñ xel moto ko ton lu waj lu jëm ci walli tefari ndaw yoy ci walli affaire auto dawalam auto because as a first class magistrate would have been dealing with much more serious offenses ndax jamono bobu first class magistrate fok si nga wara jiflante ak mbir yo xamne ni mo gëna for lolu and as such there was um that there was a traffic um court at the KMC ndax ci jamono bo sa amna traffic court bo xamne mu ngi daw ci KMC so um we would hardly hardly have um a case where we would have been dealing with traffic offenses eh ci jamono bo na dana jaan dana daan jafé dal pour ñuy jëflante ak mbir yo xamne ni mbir affaire dawalam auto la but but since those charges were um were 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 together with one um count which was um a felony a felony 
imprisonment I told it wise to um, to to retire back and then advise myself better um, for sentencing. Uh, Commons, at this time though, had the defendant, had the accused person pleaded guilty to the rash and or negligent are causing death? I can recall um, the accused person only pleaded guilty to um, to driving without license. But he um, pleaded not guilty to the rash to, to, the, to, the, to that act. Uh, and also um, prepared not guilty to disobedience to lawful order. So we only had two of the offenses to, um, to, to, to deal with in regarding sentencing. And the ones that, that he pleaded not guilty would have um, subsequently gone to, to, to main trial. Yes. Continue to tell the commission what happened then after on that day. So when I indicated to the um, to the parties that is the um, the IGP representative and and the, and the defense counsel representing uh, the accused person. That, that the matter will be adjourned to the following day for sentencing. The, the prosecutor at the time um, rose and made an application. That they need to see me in chambers. Before I adjourn the matter. And I, and I agreed to that. I stood down the matter. And I went in chambers. And I invited the prosecutor. And also called the defense counsel. So that I will hear what um, they have to say. And so the prosecutor informed me. That he had received a, um, a, a direction that I have to pass sentencing on the same day. From At his, this point, yes. did, did he tell you who he received this instruction from? Just said from his superiors. I understand that they work um, on command. I also recall, he, yes, go ahead. Continue. I, I also recall he, he told me that he is just merely conveying the message and not really forcing me to, to, to do otherwise. They seem to be, to be worried about um, the message. Even the defense counsel was really worried about the message. I understand that and so I said to them, no problem, since that, that is the direction um, that, that you guys have received. I will abide by the directive. So let's go back to court and I will pass sentence. So at the time the conversation was happening in your chambers, did the prosecutor give any indication as to how the sentencing should be passed? Um, no, he did not because apparently um, the prosecutor throughout the trial was really um, acting in a very professional capacity. At least to my knowledge.
but the directive was that the judgment should be given the sentence should be done on that day yes. that's correct wow and is it correct to say that that was the first day that you had actually received this case file that's correct. Well, known love. Can you continue to tell us what happened when you went back to the court to deliver the sentencing? Yeah. Yeah, so, I, so I've asked them to go back to court and then I will follow suit. So when they went back to court, I thought about um, the, the information. Then I said to myself that I think this is a time for me to just um, just make sure I, I do the right thing. So I went went to the courtroom. And then I still maintain my earlier um, decision. Chila continue which is that I will still adjourn the matter for sentence. And that was done. Mr. Gomez, as per your statement that you delivered to this commission, Mr. Gomez, commission. You have said an interesting statement in it. You said at the time I decided to adjourn for sentencing the following day. I knew at the time that it was a risky decision to make. Considering the situation we were in at the time. Magistrates have been sanctioned for decisions made in court. Please, can you explain to this commission what you meant by this statement? Yes, we were, um, we were living at a time where in the environment at the judiciary was not really friendly. By that I mean there was no such of independence of the, of the judiciary. And in fact this independence was, was threatened um, both externally and internally. Externally by um, the executive or executive organs. Uh, and internally by, um, by the, the administrators we had at the time. Uh, who would want to believe that they had to do the bidding of the president or the executive to, 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 to clinch onto their offices? And to time and again, you will see our, some of our colleagues who would be called um, to Banjul to, to answer to the CG regarding the decision that they have taken. And and they will be struggling to even to to try to defend and explain um, the reasoning behind their decision. That, that was just um, on, on call for because um, in the legal in, in the in the judiciary there is always the hierarchy of courts in the appellate system. And so, and so we have always um, had the opinion that before we are um, sanctioned administratively, why not? Um, why not the parties, the aggrieved parties, applying or appealing the decision? Uh, and, and I will also later in my testimony explain how some of our colleagues have been arrested and detained. Uh, and some have to even, even um, run out of the jurisdiction um, because of the interference that we have had we have received at the time yes so mr gomez is it correct to say that you're telling this commission that at this time you were worried 
ndax mr gomes da nga wax commission bi ne jamono joji de jaxle won nga that the state ne rew mi meaning yaay jamme moy ne yaay jamme had an interest in this matter amon na ajo dal ci layo bobu hence why you received the message through the prosecutor lolo tax nan nga joton xibar gogu baye ko ci police bi taxaw won walli atté bi yes because um when we received when i received the the information from the prosecutor ya waw ndax be jamono bi nga xamé ni joton na bataxel bobu ci atté ay prosecutor bi um who himself was also looking for it mom ci bopam sax mu ngi jaxlé won and then um had to make, make it very clear that he was only a conveyor of the message bu leral mané wala dal dama la agalé bataxel bi rek de am we were very worried at the time because um of um we were very aware of the situation back then ni ngi jaxlé won rek xamné nak jamono bu nekkene bi and 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 truly if the information was correct then it means that um there is really a serious interest from the executive in the name of, in the, name of the president ci bu fekke ne kon na bala bu wolo na kon nak dafa melni amna aajo bo xamne mu ngi tukke ci executive bi di president bi ci bopam and so um it is just natural that one would be very very worried ci kon nak nek na lo xamne rek ci nek ne dinañ jaxle Mr. Gomez, tell this commission what you did on that day, even though you were worried. Mr. Gomez, what the commission did at law def? They got a jail on one guy. They were on guy. I went back to court. The matter was to court be because I had advised myself. No, that jail on the boy yet the nasu mo bopu that it would be wrong to pass sentence on that day. Ne dal du jail du purma dogal du best bo bunu nu without better advising myself. Te feke yet du masu mo bopu buba regarding what the law was at the time. And so this may operate unfairly against the accused person. And I wouldn't want to do that. And so the safest thing to do at the time was to um, was to maintain my earlier position. So I, I went to court and then uh, maintained my position that this this case will be adjourned um, to the to, to the subsequent adjourned date for sentencing. Uh, and then that was what, exactly what I did. Can you tell this commission what happened on the next adjourned date? ndax di nga wax commission bi nak bes ba nga xamne ci nga adjé nak pour layo bi lu xew in the next adjourned date ci benen bes bi nga xamne ci lañ ko toxalon i had already um consulted the, the relevant laws eh ci la dal di sellu nak li nga xamne mu ngi jëm ci wali loi yoy and then it was very clear that the offense was very minor eh ci la ngi fi dal deug la dal tuma yoy lu tuti la so i said to myself um since it, it it remains to be no matter what the facts are it remains to be a traffic offense and so i have to be guided by the rules regarding sentencing as per the traffic offense ci la jël na sa tay nga xamne ni mom lay mom ay tété ci walli ni atté su fekké né mu ngi jëm ci mbiri auto yi dawalam auto yi la and these were offenses that would mainly mainly attack fine um fine té té ba nak lolu ci bari dal moy alaman rek and so i i i just um sentenced the 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 convict accordingly ci la dal di atté nak ki nga xamné mom lañ tumal if i recall well um it is um, a fine in default to serve a, a term in um in prison té té man suma fatalé ko moy atté bi moy alaman bo xamné bu ko fayuté dana tedd nangam ci kasso this um usually either 2000 or 3000 dollars or so around the uh, around the figure ñaari ñaari junné wala be ñetti junné dalay ci dal yes can you tell this commission what happened next legi na waxal commission bi lu xew ganaw lolu so the 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 two counts were were already behind us ñaari atté in tuma yi nak yoy tamen ñu ci suñu ganaw and so we had to proceed um in full ball loan trial with the subsequent counts wa ci kon dañu wara continuer na yeneen ñaari atté yoy nonu so um the 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 igp called witnesses eh igp na ci la on ak ay cd they they called um the the security officers who were allegedly said to have shot at the vehicle ci lañ on ak ñi yëngu ci walli kaara nga tegn tuma ne dal ñoo ñoo soxé won ay bal yoy men they all testified no me ñu ñew dal ci gaara seen cadeau and um also the the the, the, the prosecution tendered in court as well the the the, the autopsy report eh ci ko lu nak li nga xamne moy bataxel bi wone ne kooku 
An evidence was laid um, uh, in that respect regarding uh, what caused the, the death of the uh, So we followed the, 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 the normal court proceedings regarding trial. Yes. Just for a better understanding for the commission. At the second agenda date, where you found it necessary that, where you found it necessary that, the accused person was guilty in some of the charges before you. Did you reserve the judgment, the sentencing, on that day until you heard the full trial? I cannot recall. I, I think that would happen exactly what I did. Which would have been also a very appropriate thing to do. Considering the fact that he, um, he was also facing some other um, counts. And, and so to pass sentence may, um, may actually um, have an effect in, that, in, in the trial. Yes, but, but this, this happened five to six years ago. But, but, but I also forgot um, to state clearly that the issue of bail was discussed, which was very natural in a criminal matter. And I think that was one of, if not the only matter that I have denied bail. Because uh, um, the, the accused person was in mild truth throughout the pendency of the, of the, of the trial. The reason being, uh, considering, the, considering the circumstance of the case at the time, I thought it was in, in his own interest for, for him to be in a place where everyone will know he is at. Was it because of an influence or a directive that said not to grant bail? No, in fact, there was no, no directive regarding not granting bail. This was a matter which involved shooting. It was really un 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 unprecedented um, to a certain extent. Even though there were certain incidents in the Gambia, but then um, it, I, I, I will say um, for us at the lower, lower court, we wouldn't really have um, access to those cases. And there was great interest both um, at the, in the public domain and the government um, interest as well. So in my mind, the safety of the accused person was, was paramount. And, and as counsel, if, if you look at um, the, the criteria to, to consider in granting bail, you will realize that it's in fact fundamental that if you think that the, that the life of the accused person may be at risk when he's outside, it will be much more um, safer. To, to, um, to, to, to deny him bail and, and, and pending the determination of the, uh, uh, of the case. So I thought his life may not have been safe, safe outside. So I denied him bail for his own interest. Yes. So Mr. Gomez, it's correct to say that you're telling this commission that you were protecting the witness, so you held him in protective custody in other words, from your actions of denying bail.
That's correct. Well known. And you have just told the commission that there was interest by the state in this matter. Yes. And there well. was also interest for the public to know what happened. That's correct. Mr. Chair, with your permission, at this point, I would like to show the witness a letter that emanated from the um, president's office. Yes. Go ahead. With the permission of the com commission, I would like you to read the subject of that letter. The, the subject is um, incident report. Uh, and uh, can I go through the letter? You may continue. It states that um, this, to acknowledge receipt of your investigation report, uh, on the fatal shooting of Ya Binta Jaju on the 7th March 2015, the report was brought to the attention of His Excellency the President, Commander in Chief and Minister of Defense. His Excellency pursued the report. His Excellency report Bobu and directed that the accused be taken to court as soon as possible. And it should be impressed upon the judge to have the trial proceed without adjournments. The public should also be informed of what happened through a press release. I think it was, it was signed by MLFK Jame for the Permanent Secretary. And addressed to the Chief of Defense Staff and also the Inspector General of Police. Can you also indicate those who were, it was copied to? It was copied to the Secretary General Office of the President. It's a copy of the Secretary General Office of the President. We saw that they could not go Permanent Secretary Minister of Interior. Permanent Secretary Minister. We say to all the Interior, to all the Bureau. And the Solicitor General and Legal Secretary. Akinga Hamne Moi Solicitor General and Legal Secretary. Thank you. You read it. It was not addressed to anybody in the judiciary. I haven't seen that in the letter, I'm not sure. But would it be correct to say that at that time, any message that got to the, the SG, which is the Solicitor General and Legal Secretary, it would automatically be transferred to the judiciary? I wouldn't use the word, word automatically, but apparently, um, yes, because in the letter, it is indicated that the president said that the matter should be should proceed without any adjournments. The president, therefore, continue to and so perhaps the, the only institution that can carry out that would be the, would be the judge or the magistrate at the time. Which was in, impossible to, 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 to carry out. Therefore, Mr. Gomez, may I ask you, was this letter necessary? Was it necessary to interfere in the judicial process? Um, maybe to say, in fact, that it was necessary would be an understatement. This is a clear violation of the fundamental rights of... Um, and also the, 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 the principle that the, the judiciary must be independent. And not only independent, but absolutely independent. And so for, for, the, 
for the um, for the president to release or, or, or to release such a letter yeah, for president be the of the letter for me would really be um, an interference yeah, then I know in judicial proceedings uh, which, which, which definitely is really a serious matter thank you mr gomez mr chair at this time may we take the lunch break and continue when we return uh, thank you, Council, and uh, thank you, Mr. Gomez. We will um, uh, resume at 3 o'clock sharp. Thank you. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned.